Welcome to another video. The Linux Mint team has released a beta version of its newest iteration of the very popular Linux distribution. It's the Linux Mint 20.1, codenamed Ulisa. This means that we had to put all our other video projects aside. Although in beta, we have still decided to try Linux Mint 20.1 based on our experience with the previous versions of the Ubuntu-based operating system. The installation process was smooth as we got used to it by the Linux Mint team. The Ubiquiti installer works perfectly in Linux Mint. We were offered to choose the language, keyboard layout, then to install multimedia codecs partitioning the drive and choosing the device for the bootloader installation was as easy as usual and then a user is offered their location. After that you need to create the user account and the installation process can begin. Right after the installation, as it's usually the case, Linux Mint offers fresh updates. The system reports functionality warns users if there are any problems detected in the system. For both beginners and experienced users, the welcome app offers a direct and easy way to maintain and tweak the system, including the driver manager, which will look for and install additional drivers if there are any. Linux Mint 20.1 is also an excellent system for users coming from Microsoft Windows. It offers a Windows-like panel at the bottom of the screen. On the right side of the panel there are things like calendar, volume control, wireless, update manager and Bluetooth. On the left hand side of the panel there is a files app button, then the terminal button, Firefox, show desktop button and then the start menu. The apps in the menu are organized in categories and on the far left hand side of the menu there are also some shortcuts like shutdown, logout, lock screen, files, terminal, system settings, software app which many people consider one of the best in the Linux world and again Firefox. Linux Mint 20.1 also offers a working desktop that is easy to configure. For instance, if you need some additional icons on the screen, it's easy to enable them. You may like it or not, but Linux users pay a lot of attention and do care about customization. Customization-wise, Linux Mint 20.1 has continued the tradition of its predecessors and offers a lot of options. There is a lot of new, high-quality, beautiful wallpapers on offer, whose themes follow all four seasons. There are also many desktop themes pre-installed, so a user does not really have to search online for additional customization items. In Linux Mint 20.1, the files application version is 4.8.2, while the Cinnamon desktop is version 4.8.3. Speaking of the versions, Linux Mint 20.1 brings the latest iteration of its default Firefox web browser. In addition to that, there's a very useful link on the Linux Mint's website where you can find what's new in general in the latest version of this very popular desktop operating system. They have given a lot of attention to the web apps application. To find out more about this very useful app, you can check out one of our previous videos. There's a link down in the description below.
It goes without saying that Linux Mint 20.1 also provides all the basic applications by default, so a user can immediately after the installation hit the ground running. The application set includes LibreOffice from the version 6 series, or precisely 6.4.6.2. While we were recording the video, the System Monitor app showed that Linux Mint 20.1 was using 1.5 GB of RAM, which is not bad at all, bearing in mind that we had been playing around with the system and recording the screen at the same time. While the looks of the operating system are very important, it's even more so if the operating system has applications a user needs for different use cases. For experienced Linux users, Linux Mint 20.1 still offers Synaptic Package Manager by default. In some previous versions of the operating system, many YouTubers suggested checking the box Consider Recommended Packages as Dependencies. Now it's checked by default. For the video, we tried to install the MS Fonts package in Synaptic, and everything worked well. That's why we were able to change the default font to Arial. As we have already said in the video, Linux Mint's software manager is considered to be one of the best in the Linux world. To check out how it works, in Linux Mint 20.1 we chose to install Audacity, our favorite audio editor. It's the repository version and the installation was smooth and perfect. The application starts with no problems and it's version 2.3.3. The Linux Mint's Software Manager app has been offering for some time applications distributed as flatpacks. In this way, a user can install any app that you can literally think of. And all those apps are regularly updated. We decided to install only Office, a very capable multi-platform Office suite. The installation did take some time, but it was nevertheless successful. And the only Office suite works as it should. The very important thing is that Linux Mint does a great job in integrating Qt apps into the JTK environment. Kden Live our favorite video editor, for instance, blends in perfectly with the system. We installed the repository version of the editor and it is really very curated if you like. Very nicely incorporated into the GTK environment. We also checked how app images work in Linux Mint 20.1. Let's take LibreOffice as an example if you don't like the fact that the version which came pre-installed is from the older 6 series. All it takes is finding the LibreOffice app image on their website and sorting out users' permissions and you are good to go. The app works like a charm. Of course, installing .deb files in Linux Mint has been an easy affair for a long time, and that is the case with Linux Mint 20.1 too. To prove the point, we chose to install the Opera browser as a .deb file. As usual, the system automatically offered the installation via the GDB package installer, which is very convenient for novice users.
It took a minute or two to install it, and the app started quickly, despite the system being installed on a machine with modest hardware. Another important issue is if user can find her or his way around the system, especially if it's about a novice user of Linux. Linux Mint 20.1 offers a very familiar workflow. If you are coming from Microsoft Windows, you'll be able to navigate Linux Mint in no time at all. Pinning the apps to the panel is a matter of a few clicks. Not only you can add the apps to the panel, but you can also reorder them and it's clearly visible what apps are open. Since the Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop is based on GNOME, it comes as no surprise at all that Linux Mint 20.1 offers a user a multitasking view option. You can enable it by pressing the Ctrl plus Alt plus Down arrow key combination. In this way, you can easily switch between the apps. Another way to start an application is via Start menu. You can either browse through it or you can simply start typing the name of the app you wish to work with and press Enter on your keyboard. To search for files in your home directory, all it takes is to start the files application and type in the name of the file you want to find in the search bar. And that's not all. If you are a newcomer to Linux, you'll find it very convenient that Linux Mint 20.1 offers the maintenance option within the Update Manager application. This feature actually replaces the use of the command line and makes things much easier for newcomers to Linux. Another thing Linux Mint in general makes easy for novice users is handling USB flash drives. While in many other Linux distros, to eject a USB flash drive, you need to open files and turn it off. In Linux Mint, Linux Mint 20.1 included, there's a button on the right-hand side of the panel, like in Windows 10, to eject your USB flash drive. All in all, the Linux Mint has spoiled its users by being so easy to use and a complete operating system. And now, they don't expect anything else but the best. The same is with Linux Mint 20.1. We hope you liked the video. Tell us what you think about Linux Mint 20.1 in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. See you next time.